from the Wall Street Journal, millions of Americans skip credit card and car payments. About 15 million credit card accounts and 3 million auto loans didn't get paid in April as the coronavirus ravaged the economy. This might be a good time to leverage, might be a good time to borrow. I want to point out too that with the housing and real estate issues that we raised yesterday, we might actually be seeing the the end of the bottom here. And I, you remember yesterday I said, we can't call the bottom on this just yet. But actually we are seeing uh, a, a, a significant drive towards buying up assets. And this is from another story from APnews.com. CJ, next one on the list here. Cash, long a refuge in uncertain times, now under suspicion. In trouble times, people have known to hoard currency at home, a financial security blanket against deep uncertainty. But in this crisis, things are different. This time, cash itself passed from hand to hand across neighborhood cities and societies, just like the coronavirus is a source of suspicion rather than reassurance. Now we want people to be afraid of fiat currency because it loses value constantly and empowers the evil of governments all over the world. But now the governments might have screwed up saying, uh, yeah, cash is bad. So uh, it's a, because it's a vector of transmission. So we need digital money. We need, we need digital fiat currency. And that's going to be the push that we're seeing out of this. But more importantly, I would hope that people are getting out of the dollar because they see the risk in this, as we are also seeing a just mass of defaults. So back to the Wall Street Journal story, leaders in, lenders in April had nearly 15 million credit cards in, quote, financial hardship programs, such as deferral programs that let borrowers temporarily stop making payments, according to estimates by credit reporting firm TransUnion. That accounts for about 3% of the credit card accounts the company tracks. Nearly 3 million auto loans were in these hardship programs, accounting for about 3.5% of those tracked. The numbers have surged from a year ago when 0.03% of credit cards and about half a percent of auto loans were in financial hardship programs. The spike in unemployment caused by Corona has Okay, the Wall Street Journal line again. The spike in unemployment caused by the coronavirus. No, the spike in unemployment caused by the emergency shutdowns that government used coronavirus as the excuse for. Come on, come on, people. You call yourself journalists. Let's use uh, yourself journalists. Let's use accurate language here. Has strained people's ability to make their monthly debt payments to make matters worse. Americans were tapping credit cards and auto loans at record levels even before the pandemic to deal with rising costs and stagnant incomes. So to the free money story from the Los Angeles Times, free money amid the coronavirus, a monthly paycheck from the feds doesn't seem crazy. The notion of the federal government handing out free money used to be a liberal dream and a conservative nightmare, no more. The coronavirus outbreak, which plunged the nation into an economic freefall, has created an opening for governments and nonprofits to experiment with giving money directly to Americans with no strings attached. In LA, Thousands have been handed Angelino cards, no fee debit cards loaded with $700 to $1,500. Across the nation, food stamp recipients are getting a $1,000 check from a private effort whose lenders include former presidential candidate Andrew Yang, the big champion of UBI, the federal government with near unanimous support from Democrats and Republicans. And again, the Los Angeles Times here, whoever is approving this, I mean, playing into the, the duopoly nonsense. Well, yeah, well, Republicans would have been against us because, you know, they're fiscal conservatives. <laughs> no, it's he, the, the, the Republicans are nine out of 10 on, on a scale of, of socialism and Democrats are 10 out of 10. And the only reason Republicans only scored a nine is because sometimes they pretend to not be socialist. During the 2020 presidential campaign, Yang proposed a UBI with the U.S. providing $1,000 every month to every American adult. Seemed an unlikely proposal, but now leading Democrats have warmed to the idea. These three stories together here about the economic crisis point to major upheaval, but also a lot of opportunities. And I mean, in the immediate situation, 
And I would never suggest that anybody take advantage of this to do anything dishonest, certainly. But when you are reclaiming goods that have been stolen from the American people through the banking system, through the financial system, and you go, you know what, I'm going to get mine back. If you can borrow money on a credit card and default on it, I'm not going to hold that against you. I can't. Um, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I've tried to get approved and I have other other things where, you know, I've, you know, maybe I could fix my credit score and take advantage of this now. I don't know. But hey, if you've got really good credit right now, you can borrow money and buy a house and everybody's defaulting on that. Why, why not take advantage of this? Uh, I'm not going to prescribe anything for personal situations, but I do want to point out that the ability to enforce these debts counted in the U.S. dollar are kind of going away. Like we, I, I really think this is. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say the death of the dollar, because they could keep it going. They could, you know, figure out a way to force a digital dollar on everybody. But I am seeing a, a major economic reorganization, and I want everybody who's watching the show to have a good enough sense of that, to be able to apply this for your situation, your circumstances, and to survive and thrive with what is happening right now. Of course, in terms of investments, look at people who have predicted this. I'm one of them. And what am I saying invest in? Crypto, physical metals, physical property. I would also say this is a great time to buy used cars if, uh, if it's something that makes sense for you. And there are a lot of people desperate right now this we, we might yesterday I said we couldn't call the bottom on the real estate thing just yet, but it might be at the point where people are starting to feel comfortable with wherever they are and the desperation is wearing off. So we might actually be getting close to the bottom on real estate or at least kind of I, I, I don't want to say at, at or near the bottom, but sort of bottom mean out as in the decline is now not as fast as it was. We're seeing a flattening of the decline in real estate in these prices, although there could be a lot more coming. How much lower can it get? Hard to say. And you're going to have to decide for yourself with whatever economic decisions you make, whatever investment decisions you make right now to do the analysis on the dynamics relevant for you, for your situation, for whatever asset class you are looking at. I'm just here to point out the bigger picture and say, make these decisions carefully. Take some time. Reassess your economic positions, your investment positions right now. I know with my situation being relatively unique as an activist and online media producer, you're not going to learn a lot from me, but I will say as a homesteader, I'm very happy. I, I am, you know, I, that I own 11 acres in the mountains in Arizona, that I own the facilities here to live off grid and be happy and healthy if, if the entire world crumbles around me. I am not dependent on the outside world with what I'm doing here. There is CJ again. Thank you for pulling up our Instagram page for the Garden of Freedom. Yes, beautiful there. Great plug, CJ. I appreciate this. And this is, you know, if anybody wants to get, if you are desperate, I will say, for people who are watching this, who, you know, you're, you're about to be up shit creek without a paddle. You want a way to radically lower your living expenses. Come join us at the Garden of Freedom. Send me an email, adam at thefreedomline.com. If you want help buying land out here, adam at thefreedomline.com. Uh, finally, after today's show, I am going to write that email introducing everybody to our real estate agent, Donna Hancock, or Ernie Hancock's wife, freedomsphoenix.com. Please uh, check out freedomsphoenix.com and send me an email if you want to get involved with what we're doing here at the Garden, any of these other economic opportunities. But please, most importantly, don't Keep your head buried in the sand. Be paying attention to the bigger picture. Thank you, CJ. Yes, freedomsphoenix.com. Great news aggregator website. It's a great source of uh, information for this show. And especially when we see, even in the mainstream, these stories of economic manipulation, you got to turn to someone you can trust for an alternative narrative. Freedoms Phoenix is a great source for all of that. But ultimately, again, you know, Think for yourself, the best that I can do here is point out some opportunities for you, whether it's, uh, you know, buying assets that people are desperate to sell, borrowing money, things like that, investing more intelligently with your savings, establishing a nest egg or a fallback or a piece of property like this 
that you can have is a fully independent homestead, whatever it is. I hope considering these options is something that is valuable to you. Of course, we want to sell domes. We want to make more money. We want to bring more people into the garden. We want to grow Adam versus the man. We want to encourage you to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Adam versus the man. If you see any other business or economic opportunities for me that I'm missing to share with the audience, of course, Adam at the freedom line.com. Thank <laughs> you.